Oh my god. Um, I don't even know how to start this, to be honest. Wow. Okay. So, first things first, apologies for this long-ass hiatus. Uh, I've just been really busy, uh, life stuff, and, um, you know, just in general, shows are starting to come back, so I'm, like, readjusting to, like, making content and stuff. So, uh, yeah, apologies for the long hiatus, but... We are back, nevertheless, and boy, are we back with a good one. Uh, Mm -hmm. Of course, this is another episode of Channel Chasers. I am, of course, Jay, your host from TV Time with Jay, and joining me, as always, is my friend, my co-host, and my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. Apologies for taking so long, Brian, but how are you doing? Well, I'm all right. A little blown away. Um... And uh, from, honestly, a sleeper hit, if we're being honest. 100%. Like, I was just like, okay, we're out of shows to do. We have nothing on the schedule right now. Oh, yeah, this came out last Friday. Let's do this. And I was like, I vaguely remember hearing the premise before, telling you about it. And it seems interesting. And uh, it's got Dwight from The Office and uh, John Cusack. Yep, and boy, did we uh, vastly underestimate this one in the best way possible. (laughs) Holy Mm -hmm. shit. Wow, so if you can't already tell from the title, thumbnail, and our flabbergasted-ass reactions, uh, we are talking about Utopia Season 1, because please, God, let there be a Season 2. Yes, um, it is... The newest show from Amazon Prime Video. Bait upon a British show of the same name, and I know the British show at least has a season two. Good, 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 good. So, Thank you, Britain, for once again giving us some gold. All right. But, uh... Save the fucking queen. But, yeah, this is based upon a British show, but they, of course, have made their own little twists and turns here and there, and, um, I... I hate to say this, but I feel like, yet again, this is going to be a time where our non-spoilery part is immensely short. Yeah, honestly, because there's not much we can talk about without getting into spoilers. Uh, So, yeah, um, essentially, this show is about um, a cult hit comic book about a girl who is the daughter of a mad scientist who is uh, kidnapped and forced to manufacture plagues and viruses that a supervillain unleashes upon the world. And then we discover that everything in said comic book is real, and there's a pharmaceutical company manufacturing the end of the world, and our intrepid group of comic book weirdos are trying to stop it. That's as spoiler-free as I can Mm -hmm. get. Uh, and so... uh, and of course, at because they've met online, and oddly enough, even though we have a big group of online friends, we've seen each other. They apparently have never yeah. seen each other. Yeah, I find that odd. I, like y- y'all have never done like video chats and stuff. Like all my, I've I've video chatted with every single online friend I've had. Um, and I've met a good majority of them. I mean. I haven't met Brian yet. Funny enough, the, the like the couple of times I've been, you know, at least in the same state as Brian, it's just like, sorry, man, that's just way too far out for me to drive out. Uh, nah, I mm-hmm. can't do that. So, yeah. And you're too busy I, I, with family stuff. Mm-hmm. So, unfortunately, I have not uh, gotten a chance to meet Brian yet. But, yeah, no, I, I, that's why, I would, like, when, the, when that whole thing started, and I was just like, oh, I, I can vibe with this, because I have a lot of online friends, especially the, uh, you know, I started my whole, like, YouTube career as a comic book re- uh, reviewer. So, like, you know, I, I had a lot of fandom. So, like, having a bunch of online comic friends, like, I, I totally get that. Like, I've met Kat in person. Well, I think Kat's the only uh, uh, one of my, like, online, like, YouTube friends that I've, I've met, um, like, IRL. Um, nice. But, yeah, but, no. It's, uh, but, yeah, I've never really... That was a super interesting bit met my IRL I've never met my uh, online friends IRL but 
but I have seen them and like done video chats and stuff. So I mean, kind yeah, of I was weird, gonna say, but it was yeah, also I was kind of say, cool yeah, because it is it, it is really it is really interesting to see like that like some people still like don't even use the video chat part like. Me and Brian have made videos together for years now. Um, we, I mean, we had a whole um, the other the like the video version of the podcast that lasted over a year and a half. And here, I thought I wasn't going to have to mention uh, the old version of the podcast uh, when I was but talking any, about the new show. But anyway, so uh, these misfits come in all shapes and sizes, including mm-hmm. an Euphoria alumni. Yep. Oh man, but, it's it's pretty crazy. But but yeah. And uh the, this show is like I don't think this this spoils anything, but uh just like in some other shows that are really popular right now, including Game of Thrones, don't ever think that anyone is safe. Yeah. This show is crazy relevant. Uh, like, and the more you, like, the further it goes along, just the scarier how relevant it becomes. Like, it's just, it's Especially wild. because it kind of matches a ongoing conspiracy theory for real life. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and go into spoilers. Uh, we highly recommend you check out this show. It's pretty Yes, amazing. yes, yes, indeed. If we hadn't gotten that across, it's, um... Like those shows that I mentioned before, and from what I hear, Fargo, it is it a is definitely show, it, it definitely has that Fargo vibe. If you like it, Fargo, it is a show and it's like, that is. Oh yeah, go ahead, Brian. My bad, I didn't mean to step on. I was just gonna say it is a show that is dark, gruesome, and uh, really intense, but also has good comedic moments intertwined with it. Yep. Um, it definitely, like, the, the closest show I can compare it to definitely is Fargo, because the coolest thing about Fargo are seasons, which means, you know, every season except for three, um, is Fargo has this, like, controlled chaos about it, and this mm-hmm. show definitely has that same element. Uh, In a similar it. vein, this is going to sound weird, but I also think that it has somewhat of a similar just tone to uh, Umbrella Academy. Oh yeah, I, I could totally, I totally feel that. I, I could see that comparison very much. Also, also uh, because it has this kind of mixed media approach to some things, uh, there are some like obviously because like a big plot device all throughout the show is a comic. There are sections where they go into this like comic mode, and it reminds me of one of my favorite canceled shows, Deadly Class. R.I.P. Um, mm-hmm. Indeed, de- I I definitely got that vibe from it as well. Um, so if any of those elements intrigue you in the slightest, definitely go check this show out. It's pretty. And um, without without spoiling, we really need a season two. We really, really do. That's a huge cliffhanger. I don't know if I can deal, man. I don't know if I can deal. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about it. Fuck, man. So this is an interesting, like, difference is dynamic because uh, usually I let Brian go first because it's the freshest in Brian because Brian is the last to catch up. But uh, honestly, because I was so busy with um, making videos and doing other stuff today, I was the last one to finish. So it, I guess um... I'll go first. I don't know if anyone is still around from back in those days, but back during the video days, it kind of reminds me of when we covered the first season of Lost in Space, because I had a lot of life things that came up, and so I was marathoning it as fast as I could on Saturday and the day that we record, and... uh, I kept having to tell Jay, need 30 more minutes, need an hour, sorry. And just yep, kept yep, texting yep. him. And yeah, then we, we ended up yeah. starting recording real late, yeah, this like is today. Pretty, this is, yeah, this is pretty much the same situation. But um, reverse. But yeah. 
so uh, I guess the first thing I want to talk about is holy shit! Like the mm-hmm. writers for this show are like they saw what George R. R. Martin was doing and said, "Oh, bet, bet." Well, we um, one thing to remember that Jay knows that some of you out there might not know. Uh, this is the same, the person who wrote this, these shows, like these episodes, is the same woman. The same, who yeah, created, the same author who wrote the uh, who wrote the novels for got both Gone Girl and Sharp Objects, and also wrote the shows or or adaptations for both Gone Girl yes. and Sharp Objects. Um, yes. Which and both so, show uh, both those things are amazing. If you haven't seen Sharp Objects, Amy Adams was robbed. Amy Adams should have won an Emmy for that fucking performance. Uh, mm-hmm. but, uh, and I know of at least one person from this show who I think deserves an Emmy, but we'll get into yep. that. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that. But yeah, like first thing that just like blew me away in the first episode is just how unafraid this show is to just like it just puts its foot on the gas and just never stops. Um, mm-hmm. Like, there are no breaks in this show, and it, it just... Honestly, like, I needed to take a break when we were halfway... When I was halfway through, and I was like, you know, so much is happening right now, bro. <laughs> I, need that, I need to stop for a second. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, like, honestly, it's, it's, it's one of, like, the best, like, thrill rides I have ever ever experienced um just from start to finish and just no one was safe also just i want to start off r.i.p sam i love sam i was upset i was like yo you ain't mm-hmm. gotta do sam like that and that was and the like way that. they did it was just so quick and not expected at all Yo, and her body is there for several episodes, and she's credited. Like, if you pause and you pull up the credits, her, she's still there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, uh, cause, like, yeah, and, uh, the way, the reason why she dies, too, is smart, but also fucked up. Yeah, because it may, I mean, like, because okay, so uh, so Jessica Hyde is the main heroine of the comic book, right? Of the comic book series, like Dystopia and Utopia. We find out, of course, Jessica Hyde is a real person, um, and then Jessica is obviously looking for Utopia too. So she approaches our group and is like, "All right, where the fuck is Utopia? Are you gonna help me find Utopia?" And then she ends up saving uh, Wilson from certain death, um, and they're like, "Okay." fuck this shit is real i guess we gotta help and so of course you know the most like grounded like person in the group the most like every man is like uh and you know that that guy is of course uh what, what's his name again uh, ian ian he's just like right, played guys, by uh, played by a dude from cougar town <laughs> yeah the kid from cougar town he's not a kid no more but yeah he was the kid no. from cougar town um, but yeah, he was, but he was just like, fuck you guys. Um, do we even trust this psycho? Like, how do we even know this shit is real? Cause like, it's like fucking comic book. Like, what are we supposed to do? And then, you know, um, of course, Sam, not wanting her friends to die is like, yo, Ian, bro, um, literally Wilson just lost a fucking eye and his entire family was murdered. Obviously she didn't say the murder part out loud. Because uh, I don't think they knew at the time. Um, no, but like I think I think she might have known. But oh yeah, because oh uh, yeah, because Be- I think her and Becky knew and just didn't tell. Wilson and Jessica or, lied to Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so like she's like you know, bro. Ian Wilson's family was murdered, and uh, fucking Wilson lost an eye. I'm pretty sure this is real, bro. Uh, I think you need to calm down. And we can just work this out. You don't gotta leave. You know, we can we can we can figure this out. Yeah, and uh, she starts like Listen. rationalizing and being yeah. a true leader. Yeah, and she's like she's negotiating. She's talking him down because you know they've known each other for at least a year, and they're friends, and he trusts her. So he's he, he's backing up. He's calming down. He's starting to sit, and then blam, 
Jessica shoots her in the fucking head. She goes, and then everybody, understandably, is like, yo, what the And, you know, like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> so, uh, I subtracted her. You know, I can do math. You can't have two leaders. So I got rid of her. It was just like, There well, can be only one. <laughs> all right. I understand, but... I... That was fucked up and came out of nowhere. <laughs> yep. Especially because because they also kind of like pulled a similar move to like Game of Thrones where you don't in a way that you don't expect it because they had literally just had a scene where Jessica said you need to change your appearance. And so she changes from having the long black blonde hair to short to like full, yeah to, to yeah to full sexy goth girl and it's just like oh and, see she's taking it seriously and just in that scene in like a scene after she changes her hair the freak out happens where she dies and it's just like you yep. literally just changed your appearance we were not expecting that to happen but that was like our awesome. first she was the she was the one that was like believed Jessica the most and was the most on Jessica's side. Yeah, like but Jessica is a true survivor and knew that there could only be one leader, and knew that they trusted her to be trusted Sam to be their leader, and they were all depending on her. But yep, and and, but could, still, and she couldn't have somebody was... ruining the group dynamic and challenging her authority. But yeah, no, it came out of nowhere. It was a hard and this was like our first sign up. of, hold on. Yeah, what kind of, sh- what even is this show? I mean, honestly, we got that with him. But like, once we got here, uh, like, it was just like, damn. Man, it it just it just took us on a ride and we did not feel the very, uh, but yeah. So, obviously, you know. Uh, the whole, uh, the first uh, of the season is finding Grant and uh, getting Utopia because Grant managed to jack Utopia and very similar because... to Umbrella Academy, even though it's not the same circumstance. Uh, Grant, who they all thought was you know around their age, you know an adult, turns out to just be a very very smart young kid, about ten years old. Yep, and uh, basically. Similar lesson that uh, that the older kid from number five and the kids from Stranger Things definitely learned is people underestimate kids. Yep, all the time. And he uses that to his advantage all of the time. Like, that's his whole life. Yeah, 100%. And so he manages to do the unthinkable. Yeah, and he's like, all hey. these, like all these crazy like groups with all these resources are like scrambling to get Utopia. Grant manages to get it. I mean, obviously he has to escape being murdered by like you know the assassins and whatnot, like RB and all them. But uh, you know, uh, he does it. Yep, and uh, he does it because people underestimate him. We're where it's just like he goes from one place, gets a name tag, and then goes to another place saying, oh, I lost my room key. Ma'am, I, I, room key. I can't find my dad. Can you help me find my dad? And it's just like, um, you know, sweetie, we're going to have to check for ID. Uh, This is all I got. And, you and- know, he shows this phony-ass name tag, and she's just like, oh, poor kid. And, and so she like, gives oh. him a room key. To the penthouse, and yeah, he he's enjoying his life, being a kid, kind of home aloneing it for yep. a minute. And then you hear like people coming in, and it's like, oh fuck, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, homie rolls up, like homie who bought Utopia rolls up with a sexy bull. I think bull. I, I want to say she was like some kind of like blue haired cat girl. I almost thought it was uh, Bulma she from was, Dragon Ball. I remember she had pink hair, and I think that no, was blue. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was blue, but she was wearing a lot of hot pink. And I think that just her and everybody else that was there 
we're dressing up like characters in Utopia. Oh, uh, okay. Got you. And so she was just a okay. random like character from Utopia that she apparently had slutted up. Because, oh my yep. god, that outfit. Yep, I mean, like, you could, like, her ass was hanging all the way out. You could see her panties. Hey, no shame. Do, do you, man. Mm-hmm. Cons are fair game. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was, uh, so, you know, he, he's hiding, obviously. And then RB and his homeboy roll up and they're just like, you know, well, obviously they roll up after they murk literally everybody who's seen Utopia, including poor Callum Worthy and his wife. Um, mm hmm. Because, yet again, we have a case of like, uh, I guess they've said it, they've coined it now as like Drew Barry syndrome, where you think they're going to be a bigger character, but then they're not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like where Drew the, Barry yeah, more in yeah. screen. Oh, yeah. Where, where, the, where the bigger actor who, uh, is, like, where there's a big actor who's a celebrity, but uh, they get killed as like the opening death. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is Drew Barry mooring. Yep. Because mm-hmm. that's. Well, I think it's called Drew Barrymore, and it's called the Scream Effect, because, you know, obviously it was popularized with Scream. Um, yeah, for Drew but Barrymore. Yeah, same deal. Um, but, but, yeah, he he and his poor wife get murked because they stumble upon Utopia, like, in um, her grandpa's house that's, like, you know, full-on hoarder mode. Um, and he's like, Holy shit, this could be like when that dude found that Batman comic and sold it for like a billion dollars. And then, you know, also, Mm -hmm. as as a comic fan, I was hella confused at first. I was like, how is anyone going to buy that? That's not even, that's not even binded correctly. It's just pages. And those pages don't even look like they're in good condition. They're not, they're not even boarded. Like, no one's going to actually buy that. But apparently, like, apparently, it it was like a yeah. It's like, kinda, it's like I an guess. original. It's an original manuscript, so I guess it's worth yeah. more. But also, like those, pa- those like that page quality is totally off. Like, I, like I know this is dumb, and like I shouldn't be harping on this, but I've collected comics for fucking twenty years of my life, um, and well, um, it irked me. I was I like, oh, wait a minute. I None of this say is that, actually uh, sealed. That uh, they were, you did notice that, that the highest bid that someone gave until Big Penthouse Homeboy ran around was $6,000. So people weren't pe- asking too much for it. Oh, yeah, that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't a huge amount. So, like, yeah, they were, they, I'm glad they were paid attention to, like, the condition of pages. Like six k mm-hmm. isn't isn't much for something like that is within that world that rare of a commodity because like if you have something actually like sealed and like maybe like full CGC graded and I realize anyone who is not a comic book fan this sounds like complete gibberish but essentially right just just a quick side tangent mm-hmm. CGCing is what happens is what you do it's it's what you do when you have a really rare comic. And you basically put it behind this like glass tab and you send it to this company where they like, you know, rate the authenticity and the condition. They put an official grade on it and uh, it, it like they give you a, cert- a certificate of authenticity with its market value and uh, you just kind of keep it um, and you sell it for later. I have a couple old X-Men issues like that. Uh, I have the first I have like uh, Iceman's first limited series. Uh, stuff like that. Um, oh, nice. I have a lot of. But, I have a lot of. I have but, a lot of. Um, shit. But yeah. But yeah. That, that's um, just and my, that's just my side on, tangent as a uh, comic collector. I'm sorry. And like, while the, we're the, on like the nerdy subject here, real quick though. Uh huh. Ian is one of us. Even to the fact where we find out that he's written fanfic for like five oh, years. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that that hit close to home for sure. I was like, but oh, anyway, yeah. uh, back to this though is uh... yeah. So um, at first, at first, you know, it's kind of cute because like you know, uh, the the group meets up and you know, first to meet up is of course Ian and Becky who have like who clearly have been crushing on each other. And luckily, this was not a catfish situation. Good for Ian. Which also um, 
I kind of hate to be that guy, but um, I do have to point out that uh, that I thought for sure that they were going to go the like normal route of what do TV you mean, normal shows route? and like have Ian and Sam. Oh, you know the two the two white leads always yeah, getting no, together. I, yeah, no, I'm I'm really glad that they like they switch it up because like yeah. I mean because inter interracial couples like on TV are very rare. Although it's even rarer when it's not a white person involved as one of the interracial uh, pieces. That, uh, but that that's too. another conversation but anyway, for another time. Ian and Becky meet, meet, and it's a little awkward at first, especially but it's super because cute Ian at the same accidentally. Time. Ian accidentally puts his foot in his mouth. And doesn't yeah, even realize and he, it. Yeah, he also approaches sexy cosplayer chick. Um, yeah, just like oh, not Becky. He had his hopes up a little too high. And then, and then he has that like cute, awkward moment where he orders the fruity drink, and then she comes in and. Becky comes in and orders a beer, and then he's like feeling a little bit emasculated. Hey man, she, the, uh, hey he man, tries those, it those, and then I says that she wants one. Those fruity drinks are amazing, especially when they give you the cool cup. I'm not, yeah, I'm gonna take the fucking fruity drink. And salt indeed, me all you but, want. That shit tastes indeed, delicious. But, but when the when the girl came in and asked for a beer, that definitely. Hey man. Nah, fuck that. I'm not a beer person. That's not going to intimidate me at all. Um, but anyways, um, uh, moving on. So but the group they're having a cute eat. moment and they're vibing. And also, also, like speaking of little shippy moments, like you know, you talked about Sam before. I actually was like really feeling um, Wilson and Sam a little bit because like they have that little cute moment. Oh yeah, where, me like, too for sure. Sam where Sam stood up to the fanboys and Wilson backed her up. And yeah. I, I really... And again, as a, as a comic nerd, I 100% agreed with Sam's speech. And this is coming from somebody who, like, for years, like, a, uh, analyzed on a, like, a liter literary level comic books. Uh, but, like, I, you know... and. This will just this will end up turning into a rant if I let it go any further. But I really agree with like Sam's position on like how once once people like got the okay for comics to be cool, they felt like they had this kind of like elitist badge. Like, yeah, we've been here forever. Let, let us tell you how well, well, how this this comic is supposed to be interpreted well, and blah, also, blah 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 blah. You notice the little bit of. Uh... Like mansplaining, there's yeah, no, no such there, thing there, as yeah, a yeah. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a moment. lot of gatekeeping there. There's a lot of gatekeeping yep. there, and I have I have a lot of female um I have a lot of female comic book um fan friends. Um, like honestly, like my friend Cat could school almost anybody on uh, comic book lore and knowledge. Like um, I I, I doubt anybody could step to her with especially something like spider-man but like it, it's that, it's that kind of thing where like guys think it's cute some guys actually just think it's cute that and like the girls are just trying to pretend to know these like facets of lore so they can impress these neck beard ass bitches like no some girls actually like comics man there are female heroes and male heroes can inspire girls too mm -hmm. like, there's nothing wrong like y'all are just assholes. Indeed. Um, like, uh, I that was a good moment. But yeah, that I did. Feel it, like... And it, it, it did. And also, it didn't feel. Um, another thing I want to comment about about the, like the group dynamic before we get into the more serious stuff. No, uh, Wilson, um, Ian, Becky, and Sam. They did not feel big bangish at all. They felt like real people. Like yes, and, and I really uh, appreciate that. I do want to also say that. Uh... They also subverted expectations because you think with a show like this, oh, you have a lead, you have a lead like couple, so they'll take all day for will they, won't they, and maybe they'll kiss in the finale. No, they like yeah, nah, they, they, they pull on they pull on make out within like minutes of meeting each other, and I mean they've known each other for a year. 
and like clearly had feelings for each other. So if they didn't make out, I would have felt weird. And I gotta admit, even when it came to like the weird, fucked up stuff, was not that great at handling it. But with the normal, like when he was just talking to her, he was like saying all the right things and stuff. Oh yeah, no, he he was he was definitely a, like a good rock for her in terms of like the relationship. You talk about with Ian and Becky for sure, yeah, yeah, I agree with that one hundred percent. And yeah. So they're all vibing, having a good time. Uh, Sam kind of messes up, but just because she's so nervous and so wants yep. to get she, her hands she, on Utopia. She, yeah, yeah, she's like, "We're gonna bid. I'll give you six thousand dollars." And it's just like, "Wait, wait, uh, Sam, uh, you t- you told us to bring five hundred. I literally have no more than five hundred dollars." Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that's like a whole like, car. That's what I'm saying, Sam. <laughs> uh, like I, dude, I, I, I felt, I felt bad. I, I felt bad spending like fifty dollars on a comic. Like, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I couldn't imagine spending like, I couldn't imagine spending five hundred. But like. But still, they're but still they're they're like freaking out about how they're gonna get six thousand dollars. But in the end, they're like, "Fuck it, let's forget about that and just enjoy the fact that we finally met up." Yeah, we met. Let's have fun. And like you know, that's the thing. Wilson's dad was like, "Oh, Wilson's finally having his first sleepover. Don't forget to have a, actually have a good yeah. time, man." Because Wilson, knew- Wilson, they know that Wilson lives nearby. And they're like, can't we go somewhere with cheaper beer? Yeah, yeah. Which you know that that's always that's always the play. If you ever go to a con, make sure to go to a con in the city where your homie lives, so that you can just like you don't have to stay at the convention center. We can you can just hang out at your homie's house. Like that's definitely the play. Always the play. Um, but um, but yeah, so they go to Wilson's house and they're having a good. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, they, they, they start. They start the like. Fan. Yep. Yeah. It really does, because like literally every person that was on the list to bid for Utopia gets murked by um fucking RB and you know, uh I think his name was like Bob or something or Rob. So, yeah, Rob. I think it was Rob. He definitely reminded me, if you know this guy, a lot of Thomas Middleditch. Oh yeah, I could see that. Um, but Milovich. But anyway, uh, so they come rocking in, and they're several hours late. Yep. It's just like, um, okay, for some reason, uh, you know, uh, what do, I don't, uh, um, what was the, uh, Caleb Worthy's wife is not picking up the phone. I wonder what's going on. It's a little weird. And then you know, um, luckily, you know. Jessica ends up rocking up to uh, the, the the hotel room where, like, you know, Caleb Worthy and his wife are at, um, and uh, she lives long enough to basically beg for help. And Jessica's like, "Where's Utopia?" And she's just like, "I don't fucking know. Help me!" And then, um, you know, she dies. Uh, Jessica snatches the phone, and then she, um, you know. Pulls kind of a similar move to Grant, and like, um, like does all these tricks to make herself look like the uh, like crying upset girlfriend. Approaches security and is like, "My boy, I think my boyfriend's cheating on me. Can you help me check?" Um, she ends up like getting a snapshot of Grant, and she's like, "Okay, Grant is with this group. Okay, this group bid. Let me text them, and that's how we end up meeting Jessica." With the group, which, uh, by the way, quick side note, uh, they early on let us know that this is not like normal, cause uh, when when uh, what Rob and Arby come in and kill the people, they don't just like straight up kill them; they at gunpoint. Yeah, tell them to. 
tell them to breathe this air in because there's a gas. No, tube. that was that was with a. Uh, oh oh the, oh yeah, you talking about you talking about when they're like just going around the hotel rooms and blasting people. Yeah, because uh, at first yeah, yeah. though, with Callum and his wife, they say they say yeah, uh, yeah they're, they're like it's, it's just it's just gonna out. yeah it's just gonna knock you out and make you feel a hangover when you wake up and uh, yeah but it's but it know. ends up being mother effing heroin. Yep, they end up o- ODing on heroin and it's just like ooh, damn, you hate to see it. But yeah, no, nah, it's it, it's pretty rough, man. It's pretty da- it's pretty dang on rough. Not gonna lie. And that's where you kind of like really know that oh god, something bear is going on. For sure. And it's just like oh man, what is gonna happen here? Like wow. Um. So obviously, like I said, we we already talked about how Wilson Stanley got murked. Uh, Jessica saves Wilson, and that's how Jessica joins up with the group. So essentially, now they're looking for Mr. Rabbit, the guy who basically uh, forced Jessica's dad into servitude um, and, you know, is basically the mastermind behind all this. Uh, Well, at first, actually, they try to find Jessica's dad, but they quickly find out, which, you know, I'm glad they, like, fast-forwarded through this because normally this would be, like, an entire season of is Jessica's dad there? And it's just like, oh, no, nah, he's dead He's dead in the fire. Okay, moving on. Let's go ahead and try and kill the guy who killed him then. Um, so, yeah, we end up, that this is when we get introduced to, and I'm not exaggerating here, one of the greatest TV villains I have ever seen, John motherfucking Cusack. Yes, uh, you heard us right. <laughs> John Cusack. Yeah, John motherfucking Cusack as uh, Dr. Christie, a.k.a. Mr. Rabbit. Wow. Um, He is a pharmaceutical tycoon that basically is like a cult leader and like Illuminati member? Like, question mark? Um, Because we later find out that he's like part of a bigger organization. Yeah, he he's like pulling a lot of strings, and like every time you think something will happen, it turns out no, no, no. He's playing four D chess. Uh, person works for him. Oh yeah, that old lady across the street that for him too. <laughs> and like, at first, at first, it was giving me kind of vibes of, of uh, like uh, the second season of um, Umbrella Academy, where it's like. These killers would just be these weird people, like the ginger yeah. twins. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And but then you find out that it's not just them. It's like a lot of people. It's literally goddamn everybody. Like <laughs> you do not know where like where the cult limits just end because they don't. And it, that's kind of the craziest part. Just finding out. Oh man. Turns out you were a sleeper agent. You were a sleeper agent. Everybody's a sleeper agent. There was a liter- literally a scene like straight out of Total Recall where like homeboy's wife, this virologist's wife, gets like activated, quote unquote. And she ends up having like a knockdown drag out brawl with Jessica. And she ends up getting murked by a little girl. Uh, it's pretty yep. freaking great. But um, is this, it's just like uh, not only does she- but first, she awakens when she notices that things are about to go down, and she's like, oh yeah! Oper- Operation Fun. If you try to do what you said that you're gonna do, and tell people the truth, we're gonna tell the world that Yeah, you that you have a bunch of snuff kids. porn. Yep, you have a bunch of snuff porn with underage kids. And we all know how well those people do in prison, so, uh... Yeah, you want to uh, have fun with that? And it's just like, well, shit, I guess he's kind of fucked. And then um, that's when our team comes in. Yep, and they think he's Mr. Rabbit, so they're just like, alright, Mr. Rabbit, what the fuck is going on here? 
Um, and it's just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, please help me. And it's just like, what are you, what are you talking about? It's just like, my wife. My wife is some kind of weird sleeper agent. And she's just like, no, 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 I'm not. I'm just normal. And, until yep. and then Jessica, Jessica straight up, yeah, Jessica straight up starts carving her up. And she goes, just a normal housewife would have screamed. You didn't even flinch. Yup. And then it's just like, you know, knock down, drag out, fight. Like, literally, it's just like the scene in Total Recall where Arnold's wife, like, starts fucking, like, beating the shit out of him. Because uh-huh. uh, she got activated. Um, and uh, it's it's pretty intense. And Jessica almost doesn't make it until my sleeper favorite character comes in and takes the gun and shoots this bitch. Yep. Yeah, Alice, Grant, uh-huh. who, you, who, who you think is just this minor side character that just helps Grant out and kind of shows Grant some compassion and teaches Grant that, you know, not everyone is bad in the world and that Grant can be nice to people. Um, but yeah, because yeah, that, out, like, Blackberry scene was really cute. Yeah, and he puts back, he puts all her shit back and he gives her her note, uh, her note and everything saying that she's cool and to keep the rest of Utopia safe. Um, also, yep. R.I.P. to her mom. She did not deserve that. Um, Indeed. But, but yeah, Alice is just a fun, like, cool, smart, spitfire character. Yeah, she um, reminds, she she's like Jessica, but more mentally stable, which is weird because, you know, she straight up murdered somebody. But, like, yeah, just, she's way more mentally stable than Jessica. I love it earlier on. Uh, she's still in shock about her mother being killed. And she's... Like a little girl, so she's got the mentality. I just want to go home. Like none of it happened. I just want to go home. Yep. And uh, and then yeah, Jessica wrangles her in and like grabs her by uh like grabs her by the braids and then yep. like handcuffs her and then like I, I love it because there's like this almost like Mulan type of moment where uh fucking where she's like where you know her and Grant are talking. It's just like no nah, no nah, we're cool. It's all right. And then, just um, give me scissors. You know, she, Give me some scissors, and she gets. Uh, he gets her some scissors, and I'm like, "Oh no, is she gonna like try to kill herself?" I don't know what this show anymore. I thought man. she was gonna cut up Utopia. That's what I thought. I thought she was gonna like, uh, like get angry at the comic and cut it up, and then maybe like you know hurt herself. And then, cause, like I don't know what this show. This show's been going crazy. And uh, <laughs> maybe, but maybe also her cutting up Utopia would have revealed more secrets or something. Yeah, yeah, but, exactly. Um, but no, but no. Nah. No, she, she takes the, bra- yeah, she takes the braid and she's like, "All right, Grant, I'm gonna use to cut this." And he goes, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, cut it." And then he, you know he cuts it. and He goes, and she said, she looks at him and she says, "That bitch is never gonna have me by the braid again." And I was just like, "Oh, oh yes. shit!" And she uses those words like she uses those exact words. Yep. Oh man, I love it! I absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was pretty phenomenal. And then like just you you think that's a lot of shit going on, but then like it goes from like eighty miles an hour to like a hundred and twenty. <laughs> yes, indeed. Cause, because um, Jay was watching this and he was texting me and he's like. I'm on episode seven. And I just started episode seven, the penultimate episode, and I'm. And I want to type like something like "hold on" or something, but I don't because I don't want to spoil it for him. But it's just like that's when the shit really like. Yeah, it it just goes absolutely balls to the wall, man. Like mm-hmm. it, it like R. B. De- delivers Christy, and then John Cusack gives like the most Emmy winning performance I have ever seen. Like holy crap. Uh huh. Or he, where we reveal this whole plan from this whole entire time because we, this whole time we were watching this and we were seeing the plan unveil. But to anyone that was like, th- even somewhat smart, could tell something's off about this. Like, it's he's spreading a disease, but then also he's encouraging the manufacturing of the. Antivirus, and it's just like yeah, like 
But what's, what's going on here, man? What what's going on? And bunnies are involved, and it's yep all this weird stuff, and it's just like it somewhat makes sense, but also no until he does like the villain monologue. But it's yep it's cool though because it's not like where Incredibles made fun of it where. The hero is tied up and the villain monologues while the hero no, escapes. It, 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 yeah, this time it's the villain tied up and he's like stealing the whole show. This man is completely duct taped up and yet he just like chews the scenery like it's a five star state. Right? Yeah, because he is so like evil and connected and just so confident that at least one of his children is going to come save him and everyone else in the room is going to be dead. And he's just like, I'm going to be saved eventually, so why the hell not? Yeah, 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 y'all ain't going to do shit. There's no way. And you really aren't getting the picture, are you? You really don't get it, do you? Until he starts saying the the plan... And uh, honestly, his his master plan is kind of like, I know this is going to sound weird, but it's kind of like a smarter, more maniacal version of Thanos. I was going to say, it's like if, if it's like if Dr. Wesker and Thanos had a meeting and combined their plans. Yeah. Because like he definitely he definitely gives me Dr. Wesker vibes. If you've ever played a Resident Evil game, you know exactly who Dr. Wesker is. Um Indeed. Because this but, motherfucker never dies. Um But also Thanos in the fact that he thinks that he's the good yeah, guy. It, yeah, and his plan is all about like, you know, stopping overpopulation and whatnot. So so that they can doing, save resources. Doing the bad stuff. Because he thinks that it will be overall good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. At least MCU Thanos. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's definitely that's the uh, you know that's his plan pretty much. Um, and you know, th- th- they basically have this idea of all right, we're gonna have you confess this and then shoot yourself in the head. But this dude is so charismatic. But he ends up turning Wilson. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, yo, Wilson, of all people, like, the most paranoid. Like, he got Wilson, man. Like, I gotta admit, like, I hate him, but that was a feat. Yes, it was. And I imagine that we only saw a portion of what he told Wilson. Yep. And what we saw was very, like on brand and like hitting all the points for Wilson because we just earlier saw a scene where he like almost has a mental breakdown and all the stuff that uh, Rain Wilson has in his house and he's like why the hell does one person need all this and then and then he comes in and like completely coerces him to the fact where Wilson tells Becky to get in the car, get in the car, and he's yep. there. Yep. And he's like, then now we have two of them. Second. Yep, and the rest of them are scattered. Oh, we can get them. We oh, Don't worry about it. We'll get them later. And it's just like, oh, shit. And then, and then you, like, look down at the, at the running time, and it's like, there's only like 15 minutes left in the episode. Yep, and it's just like, what the fuck is gonna happen? And then we find Jessica ends up going home with RB because you know RB has this kind of change in personality and like he wants to help Jessica out because he feels a kinship with her. Um, kind of like the like that one male clone in Orphan Black. Uh, kind of because he also he reads Utopia. And especially an episode where Jessica, especially a page where Jessica has a brother. Mm-hmm. 
So and yeah, um, he's like. So he he ends up going home uh, with Jessica, and then we discover that this chick who we thought this whole time was Homeland Security, nah, she was actually an agent of Home, the organization that created Jessica and the rest of these like trained soldiers and like brainwashes all these kids. Um, it's um, it's an organization that uh, forget his name now, John Cusack. Yep. Like, works for. Like, he's a rogue agent of theirs. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, what the fuck? This bigger conspiracy? Yeah, and, like, and then... It's a conspiracy within a conspiracy? Yeah, and, like... then we, yeah and then we find out, like, that, like, you know, um, home, like, Blue Fairy turns out is uh like disagrees completely with Cusack's philosophy and has a whole different vision for the organization. So she's planning a coup d'etat, and her father, Jessica's father, apparently is her partner in crime. And that's when the, and yeah, I was saying that's when the big reveal cliffhanger happens. We find out that Jessica's father is still alive. And End of he is the one who created the comic Utopia. Well, we, we, we found and that part out earlier, though. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. It wasn't so really... we, we got the picture in the asylum. Yeah. yeah. And we found out that, that he... Well, we found out way, that, this we found confirmed out that he did Utopia. We found out that he created Utopia uh, when uh, we found the picture in the, the asylum picture. I thought that was just that. Uh, no, he. They said straight up when they found the picture. Oh man, he's the man behind Utopia, like. Huh. Yeah, that was very early on. I guess I must have missed it, but we see him, and he's still working on Utopia. Which yep. that is still a cliffhanger. Yep, and uh, apparently, like their vision of Utopia is very, very different. So it's just like, oh, fuck, what's going to happen? Honestly, I can't even speculate with this show, man. Usually we have a speculation portion, but I have nothing to speculate well, about. Also, also, when she I... does Jessica, we see Jessica. And, oh, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, the biggest, the big reveal of Jessica is Jessica is a super carrier with a bunch of different viruses. Um, yes. So they're, they're going to harvest a bunch of viruses to like enact their, their utopia plan. And it's just like, oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. And then also, speaking of cliffhangers, we got the thing with Grant, remember? But, oh, yeah. Wait, no, I don't remember the thing with Grant. I, I, I remember, I remember like, that, like, you know, um, they were, um, he, yeah, oh, yeah, the cops got him, right? The cops got him? And, like, yeah, because they like, were all he, having, a, they were all having, they managed to save the day. They were all having a fun time. And uh, Becky and Grant were like, all right, we still got energy, so let's race. Meanwhile, Ian and our favorite little girl there are like, no, we're tired as shit. We're just going to yep. walk. And then the cops come by and pick, Go to pick them up, but Grant tells Becky to run, and so she does. But the police have Grant. And, uh, yep. by the way, we didn't mention this earlier, but uh, Grant is suspected to be a mass murderer. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah, the, the whole, the, um, like, Cusack's organization frames Grant for, uh, like, the murder of one of their people who uh, goes against program because she's against the, uh, Mass murder of innocent children. Yep, and I I am really glad I am really glad uh, this channel doesn't have monetization enabled right now because uh, this would definitely be demonetized. Yeah, and the and they have a kid who was framed for it, and and they used the kid and uh, his fingerprints and all to frame him for this mass shooting. So. Uh, yeah, Grant is now in police custody under yep. suspect of really bad stuff. And uh, also, 
We have the cliffhanger with uh, Rain Wilson. Where yep. we, um, we saw him see him driving off into the sunset where he has the the egg. He has the, he has the mother egg, yeah. He has the, the mother, mother egg, egg mm-hmm. for this disease. It's like, what the hell? Because yep. one thing that made him a cool, dynamic character was the fact that we found out that uh, he did serve time in an insane asylum. And uh, we don't know how much of that was actually because of... Yeah, because, because like his fake wife committed him there. Um, so we don't know if it's like 100% real or like... But, but he because was, he of that... To believe it. But because of that... Uh, They've always made us, like, question his alliance and, like, made him a little bit unpredictable. Yep. And so, uh, it's like, what the hell's gonna go on with there? And then we've got Becky and Wilson, who are with Cusack, and, uh... Yeah, it's just like, oh, no, like, all, the entire team is broken up, you never separate The the party... Oh, uh, this is this is bad. The only this is real bad. the only people who aren't in trouble and who aren't like going through stuff right now are Ian and Alice. Yep. And uh, I I really like both characters, but I don't know how much of a driving force those two could be on their own. Right. Yeah, like, I mean, because, like, Ian is the least capable, like, in terms of combat, and Alice can hold her own, but also Alice is still a little girl, despite how badass she is. Uh Uh-huh. And, uh, oh, we never even mentioned it, though. One of the more interesting, like, really small side characters. Uh, what's her name? Emily? Um, who are you talking about? The t- Lily. the twin, Lily, right? The twin, Lily. Yeah, Lily. That yeah. story right. was just very interesting, and yeah, uh, also like I, I want to know if like what she was saying was like fabricated or was like was homeboy who was playing her dad did he did he do some funny business like? I doubt so. I think she was just setting up a future, like a narrative for herself. To give her a future. Oh, okay. But, uh... But, yeah, she completely goes off script. Like, they said... Yeah, I, own, I, like, I, they I, did that I, whole I liter- twin thing. I, and that I was, literally, like, really... Yeah, I literally texted Brian when that happened. I was like, she's just supposed to, like, you know, smile and wave, not really talk at all. And she does... She gives an interview, and she heavily implies incest. And I'm just like, whoop! Well, uh, that was a really off script. And even John Cusack, he sees an interview and he literally says, What the fuck? Yeah, because he's been all like calm and collected this whole time and then she breaks script. <laughs> yep. And he's like that. Also, we, also we, didn't, we, didn't, we also didn't really talk about the other side character uh, who I also hate. Uh, John Cusack's son, Thomas. Fuck. Oh, yeah. And his... Thomas is a little shit. Yeah, he's he's the epitome of that smarmy second in command character trope, and I fucking mm-hmm. hate it. Um, mm-hmm. It's just ah, uh... but yeah, watch. Uh, okay, That's... I do have one prediction. Watch, I'm calling it right now. Thomas's bitch ass is gonna betray Cusack to work for uh, you know, Blue Fairy and um, Jessica's dad. Um, because I think that they they were implying that um. Blue Fairy and Jessica's dad and all that, that they're part of an even bigger organization mm-hmm. that Cusack is only a member of. Like, yep, he's the not super the leader. Illuminati. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're way more higher up in, yeah, than he is. Because I noticed, like, remember, Cusack had that little tattoo thing. Yep. That, uh, and, yeah, that, um, yeah, that Blue Fairy also had. Yes. And I think that's a sign of something. 
bigger going on. Also, um, the Lily stuff that was like really messed up with like the whole twin thing. I yeah, and, and I, I yeah, like and I, but I do actually really like her arc where she bonds with John and like gets John to realize not necessarily his humanity, but like that he wants more in the world than to just be a mindless killing machine. I mean, have you even had Pepsi? Hey, that was Pepsi, cute. Pepsi, hey man, Pepsi does change your life. I mean, like, but it, it's it's smoother. And I like, and I like it though, where he like he after they have that scene where she asks him, next time we see them, he's got he's a sipping cup a pe- Pepsi with he's a not, swirly straw. Just, I was gonna say he's not just sipping a Pepsi; he's sipping a Pepsi with a, a crazy straw. You you know you're living life when you're sipping Pepsi through a crazy straw. Um, and uh, and yeah, so I feel like they messed up when they uh, gave it to her because uh, because yeah, she what, was supposed what, to be what, the yeah, one who was the martyr. Yeah, and since she's not living her quote unquote purpose. That it's it's messing her up, and yeah. and, uh, and, and her then she to, discovers, like, yeah, she discovers that she likes people and attention as as you know people normally do, um, and yes. so like and, she like starts to feed off of that. And I got a feeling that even though John took her back and told her to pretend, I feel like she could be an ally. Oh yeah, I think so too. Especially because, especially because you know, her and John have bonded. You know, um, mm-hmm. he's no longer RB; he's John now. And uh, he he just said, "Stay alive, Jessica." Yeah, Jessica Hyde. Yeah, so stay alive. Jessica we will Hyde. see Jessica Hyde. But but yeah, it's just all of that is like really messed up and. Uh, question about Jessica. Yeah, man. Uh, um, she was, she was, she got bit by the bunny, the infected bunny. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she was dying. Yeah, she was already dying, yeah. She said, yeah, because Blue Fairy already addressed her, she said, you're not well, you know? Yeah, so, uh, but I thought but I saw I- her start to heal. Yeah, I, I, no, yeah. See, and I think that's the point, right? Um, and this is why I'm not. Uh, I, I, I don't think that Jessica's dad is like with Blue Fairy. I think. Um, okay, so this is kind of a spoiler for Last of Us. If anyone who's not played The Last of Us, um, but I think that Jessica's destiny is kind of similar to Ellie's in that game. Where, uh, yes, Jessica is a carrier for all these viruses, but Jessica also has the antibodies for all these viruses. So Jessica is meant to die in order to rebirth the world, right? Like, you know. Well, I mean, uh, do you remember what Utopia said? Like, what her thing was? What was it? Uh, Utopia said that her. That she needed to go home and destroy everything. Yep. And they were always questioning, like, how that could be and all. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, that's going to be interesting. But also, can we just, um, before we end things and all that, can we go back, go back a little and talk about, like, that genius move of, of that, uh, what did you do? What? What did you do to make your mark in this crowded world? Uh, you uh, you cut out they, uh, you cut out you cut out all you what you say? Uh, what did you do today to make your mark in this crowded world? Oh yeah, what what, what did you what did you do today to to like uh to earn your place in this uh crowded world? Yeah, to earn your place in this crowded world. He says that very early on, like in the first or second episode. And that's like something that his family does before family dinner. Mm-hmm. And he does it with all of his kids. We find out slowly as it goes on. But then we also find out that that little mantra was a hint to his ultimate goal. Like his ultimate big plan 
was hinted at in that because it said in this crowded world. Yep. And like you have to earn your place. So if you don't deserve it, you don't get to, you know, make more. Yep. And yep. it's just crowded like, world. Oh. Yeah, Why like seeds are pl- what the Yeah. F- yeah, seeds are planted soon explodes and you're just like, oh fuck. That's crazy. Like um this is this is so cool and so good and uh also yeah, this- uh, let me tell you, I, I am sad that we had to skip so many shows, but I am glad we came back on this one. Even though I didn't expect mm-hmm. this show to be so good, it was just, mm-hmm. oh, so amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, also, um, quick side note, though. Um, the girl who plays Jessica is really good. And she yeah. seemingly came out of nowhere. Yeah, I believe her name is... It's something Lane. I know her last name is Lane. Um, but she like I think she's like done like little TV stuff here and there. Yeah, but uh, she she hasn't done much. Yeah, she's although, a, she's a pretty phenomenal actress, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Although she is uh, currently signed up for something pretty big in an unknown oh, yeah. role. Oh yeah. A little TV show about, you know, a little fan favorite character. You know, uh, Loki. Oh, nice. She She's going to be in the Loki TV show. Okay, cool. Um, but they don't know what as. Um, oh, yeah, that makes, that makes sense to me. Keep it mysterious. Um, but yeah, but, uh, uh, so... Uh, closing thoughts, Brian. Ah, yeah, no, really I, no, messed, that's... really messed with my head. But a really good show that unfortunately came out in a bad maybe time. <laughs> yeah. But, but hey, no one, no one could have predicted what happened. What, what was going to happen in twenty twenty? No comic book predicted that. But also, even though I know that they're fighting against it, and even though they shouldn't, a lot of reviewers are doting it for like how relevant it is. Yep, I still really, really, really. Need not want, but need. Yeah, no, I I physically a need two. I physically need a season two. I cannot not know what happens, man. I can't. And uh, uh, but yeah, that... for the record, her name is Sasha. Sasha Lane. Okay, Sasha Lane. Thank you. Uh, so that leads us directly into plug time. That special time of the night where we get to talk about what's coming up and going on on our various channels and or social media platforms. Brian? Well, uh, for me, I actually have something. Yay! Uh, my hope is that... Uh, To actually start covering TV again. Uh, and the show that I want to cover is... Uh, Walking Dead... But Walking Dead Beyond... World. Yeah, yeah, the YA oh, No, version. Worlds Beyond. The World Beyond. Yeah, Worlds Beyond. Yeah, the YA Walking Dead spinoff. Uh, are you gonna, I had the are two you words going... mixed up. Had yeah, are you going... The moment are you... There. Are you going to try and uh, do one day at a time to help, you know, cover it and also, like, give it ratings on CBS so that it can not be canceled a second time? Because uh, uh, I'm definitely... I'll, yeah, I'll I'm try. De- I'm definitely doing that. Um, anything else? Uh, that's it for now. Okay, so for me, um, as far as TV goes, the boys' season finale is coming up. Um I'm going to try and record it. I'm leaving on Friday, so maybe Thursday at midnight oh. I can get it up. I might try yeah, I might try to review that. Oh, the boys? Mm-hmm. Nice. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm going on vacation. Maybe I don't know. Like the trip isn't the trip isn't like entirely settled because you know world circumstances. But even if it's not, I think I need a little little mini vacation. Uh, I've been kind of going hard in terms of content, doing four like three to four hour streams daily, and uh, like you know also doing video content. Which by the way, if you haven't started following me on Twitch, definitely follow me on Twitch. I've been going really hard over there. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, uh-huh. even, Ryan's even gotten involved. We've had a blast. Um, yeah, so definitely check that stuff out. Um, the fall anime season is starting, and uh, I got a lot of stuff to cover. The Inuyasha sequel, Yasha Hime, Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, whatchamacallit. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. Burn the Witch. There's a whole plethora of anime because uh japan has um you know reopened and is you know starting to you know production is in full swing on a lot of things so uh we're actually going to get a good amount of anime this season so uh th- my anime channel jace caldea will be super active even if like my um like live action tv stuff isn't uh lovecraft country i'm still going to be doing that it has three more episodes left at the time of recording this podcast um so definitely going to be doing that. Fargo, I mi- I did not do the premiere because honestly the premiere was so heavy. I did not know how to do all that in one video. Uh, so I'm going to do episode. I'm going to you know cover episode four or episode three, um, for Fargo season four. Uh, I- I'm continuing to do Archer. You guys seem to love the Archer videos. So uh, continuing to do that. Uh, we're already halfway through the season because the season's only eight episodes. Uh, so episode five is this week as I'm recording this podcast. Um, also, I always forget to plug this, but I have a second podcast as well. If I didn't have enough plate spinning, um, Mimi and I uh, are back to doing our uh, book reviews, but in podcast form uh, in a podcast called uh, Book Dragon Reviews. It is on Anchor as well and all the other you know podcast DSPs. So definitely go check that out uh, if you're into um, books, novels, and the like. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for us. Hopefully you guys checked out Utopia and loved it as much as we did. We need a season two. Uh, but yeah, um, next time, uh, not next week, but week after next, we will be covering The Boys because The Boys are back in town. Um, and then we'll be doing more spooky related stuff after that because it's closer to Halloween. Uh, so look forward to that. Um, But until next time, we'll catch you later. Peace.